This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to do one of my favorite types of videos ever. We're going to look at work submitted by viewers like you. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first up is this beautiful book that comes to us from Sharia Ray, who lives in Virginia. This is called India, a Photographic Essay by Sharia Ray. Mr. Ray includes a letter which reads, Dear Ted, in the current uncertain time, staying at home and reading through photo books is a comforting way to quote unquote travel through time and place. The body stays on the couch, but the mind is free to soar. Having learned so much from you, I thought I would return the favor by including with this letter a recently published photo book of mine. Perhaps the book will find a spot on your bookshelf. While I sold my life Leica M6 many years ago when I transitioned to digital, I could never bring it upon myself to sell my beloved Leica lenses. All of the images in this book were shot on a 35 Lux, 50 Cron, and a 90 Cron. Perhaps being old fashioned isn't so bad after all. Perhaps one day my travels will bring me to Fort Worth. Until then, yours truly, Sharia. This is a beautiful little book and I would also like to share a little bit from the intro. This could give you some context around these images. He writes, I am a portrait photographer. Portrait photography is a collaboration between the subject and the photographer. I am an interviewer and a camera operator, the former being more critical, for it is what makes or breaks the intimacy of a portrait. My journey would take me from Kolkata in West Bengal through hundreds of miles to the villages in deserts of Rajasthan and emerge in the manic bustle of Mumbai. Over on his website, he states that he is extremely moved by W. Gene Smith's photo essays, particularly the Country Doctor and Japanese Minimata series. Sharia turned his focus into photo essays in what he describes as a collection of images, an expression on a single topic held together by a stylistic theme to deliver an impact greater than a single image. So a couple things that I want to say about this book. First of all, it is beautifully printed. The color is outstanding in here. Sharia obviously knows how to light really well. Portraits do seem to be a specialty as they take up most of the book. But on the book level, I want to talk a little bit about this because it's really interesting how the layout works. In a lot of instances in here, he has this laid out where we see sort of a contact sheet kind of thing, even though they are digital on the left-hand side, and then we see full images or the selects on the right. I think this is particularly effective. And years and years ago, um, I have a book called Magnum Contact Sheets, which is kind of laid out in a similar way. Of course, the impetus on that book is on the contact sheet itself. This kind of brings that to mind, and I think it's really well done in here, and it tells a much larger story story while you still get the artist select in the end. I think that's really cool. Now, as I mentioned, the portraits do seem to be Sharia's real main focus on there, no pun intended. They're really well done. I think his sense of light is amazing. Some of these are done in natural light. Some of them combine natural and artificial light. They're just really, really well done. What I think is particularly outstanding, though, is the more photojournalistic photo essay types of images that you see in the beginning chapters and then at the very end of the book. There's a whole theme in here on wrestling that I think is absolutely outstanding. There's another one on artists working. And then the stuff at the end seems to be a little more freeform in terms of, you know, what it's telling the viewer. But I think some of these images are really cool. I think Sharia has a wide range that he's able to cover. And this book is quite impressive. So, Sharia, thank you for sharing this with me. I will definitely give it a place on the bookshelf as soon as I actually get one in here. It's really becoming out of hand with stacks of books, but this is really fabulous. You should be very proud. Thank you for sending. All right, next up we have this book that comes to us from Italian photographer Massimo Cristaldi. This is called Suspended. This is a very beautifully printed book. This deals with essentially urban landscape images from Sicily. These photographs were taken between 2007 and 2021, and they're basically of places that are overlooked, forgotten, abandoned, some unfinished, deserted, or destroyed, uninhabited, with a very small population. You're also gonna notice that most of these photographs are of built structures, not of nature landscape, obviously, and architecture is reflective of all types of styles, both past and present. There are very few appearances of people in these images. Massimo states in here that he's interested in photographing places that are familiar to him from his homeland, not reflecting the stereotypes of Sicily or the Mediterranean cultures and areas. And Massimo also states in his letter that he and I are both mutual fans of the great master Luigi Ghiri, and there definitely is an influence of that in here, I think particularly within the aesthetic and a lot of the color palettes that are used. Luigi Ghiri was also a highly conceptual photographer, and I think a lot of that is echoed in this book. Obviously, the whole idea of suspended, and you're going to see that echoed in the images as we move through these pages. So a couple notes that I'll make on here. Really, the images are beautiful. I really don't have a lot of criticism on here. I think this is an excellent example of something that we can all learn from. This is obviously a professionally produced book. Typography in here is outstanding. I think it's really interesting how you see the layout change as we go from page to page. I think Massimo has a pretty dynamic layout that 
shifts enough not to where it's absurd or distracting, but it really just kind of gives it a little bit of energy as we move through this book. The scale of the images is really dynamic. Sometimes we have full page bleeds or we have something that sits over the gutter of the book. Other times we have facing images that sometimes are symmetrical, sometimes they're asymmetrical. We place with scale. It's just really well done. I think it's very beautiful in the way that it's presented. The other important takeaway that I think anybody can learn from this book is I think he has a really good sense of pacing. This book is not cluttered at all. There's never too much information on one single page. He's not afraid to let white space breathe and to use that to his advantage to draw attention to an image. It's just really well done. And of course, if you want to get this book or any of the others that I'm sharing in here, I'll put in the show description all of the links to everybody's websites so you can check these out. This is definitely one worth getting. Uh, I think Massimo is an incredible photographer and Massimo, thank you very much for sharing this with me. It's absolutely outstanding. I have a few more books that I want to share. This one is particularly outstanding. It's a book on tango dancing. And then this one, which is also very unusual with these long panoramas. So we're going to get to those, but real quick, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace. Listen, you need a website and we all know how much work that is to build and maintain, but it doesn't have to be. Squarespace is by far the easiest way to build your online presence. It's also the best way to grow a business that works for you without having to write a single line of code. Do you just need a simple portfolio or a blog to showcase your work? Well, Squarespace is perfect. Featuring a drag and drop interface, it's intuitive, it allows you to build galleries quickly and update your site with ease. Are you running a business? Well, Squarespace gives you additional tools for things like appointment scheduling, private member areas, social media tools, and even advanced email marketing. Do you sell products or services? Well, Squarespace has you covered with complete tools to power your store, from merchandising to checkout so that you can sell, ship, and build your customer base. You can even sell classes or manage appointments through your website. And with Squarespace extensions, you can easily sync with third parties to manage, optimize, and enhance your website. From social media integration to SEO, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to grow a business that works for you. So head over to Squarespace and sign up for the free trial. Start with one of their award-winning templates and see what you can create and just how good you're going to look. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com AOP and I can save you an additional 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just use offer code AOP on checkout. So give it a try and see if Squarespace is right for you. And I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so next up we have something very unconventional. This is a little zine that comes to us from Egal Stalbuck. It's called Night Movie. Egal is born in Poland. He currently lives in Tel Aviv. And of course, as you can probably guess from the name, we have a series of panoramic shots that were all done at night. I think this is a particularly interesting concept. Some of my favorite shots in here are when we have a little bit of reflection from the sky, from city lights, or maybe even moonlight. It's a really interesting approach to doing this. And I love the fact that they're long horizontals too. A lot of the images in here are of similar places, if not the same place in different conditions. So I think those variations bring out a lot of interest as well. Egal, I think the photographs in here are exceptional. I love the concept of exploring a format that's very unusual. The only thing that I would suggest, and this is just a critique, it comes down to what you've done with the printing on here. Now, I don't know who you went with to print this, but you did choose a glossy finished paper. And as you can see, it was kind of hard to film even. When you're dealing with this many dark tones and this much shadow uh, where you have detail that's obviously essential to the image, and when you're looking at this in any kind of light, it creates a lot of glare. And I think it would be interesting to see what the same thing looked like if you used like a matte finish paper. The only other thing, and this is super nitpicky, I'm not sure you need page numbers on here. And there are instances in a couple places where the registration was off at the printer and the numbers do get cut off. Super nitpicky, but I love the direction. I love the photographs. You should be proud of this book. I would love to see you go somewhere else with this and maybe experiment with different media types in terms of paper and uh, different printing quality types. I think it's a cool direction and just keep going, man. This is this is really outstanding. So thank you for sharing. All right, so next up is a collection of work that comes to us from James Harris, who is a London-based photographer. This is called Tango London. James includes a note which reads, Dear Ted, in your hands, you hold a copy of my first photo book, Tango London. This book started from a walk on a summer's day through a market in the east end of London. Nearing the exit, I spied in the distance some people dancing. I guess it must have been the atmosphere that intrigued me, drawing me in and demanding that 
I take a shot. I had hoped I would be invisible. However, I had not considered how much people are drawn to the Rolleiflex. One of the dancers came over and asked if she could have copies of the photos that I had been taking of her. Over the course of the next few days, I worked on the images. She was happy with the result. To cut a long story short, I joined the Facebook group and the other dancers were suitably impressed with my work. And during the next few months, I photographed them several times and got to meet some of the other dancers. For example, in the fourth vertical competition is a man named Eric. He is 90 years old and he can still dance with the best of them. By early September 2022, I had a collection of photos I was proud of and decided to have them printed. You may wonder who the woman was who first approached me. Why? Well, she's on the cover, of course. Next year, I hope to photograph them again as watching people dance the tango is mesmerizing and I hope you like the book and any critique is welcome. Sincerely, James. Okay, James, I love the concept. I think the photographs are beautiful. I really like this book a lot and I love the fact that you've picked one particular subject and you've kind of just explored that in the context of the pages here. Just in a side note, and this isn't a critique, this is just an observation, um, but as I was looking at this, and you guys probably picked up on this too, that when you're photographing tango dancers, it's such a particular dance in general that there's a certain kind of language of these geometric forms that you kind of see carried throughout this. And so it definitely has a language to itself which I think you've expressed visually, and I think that's really cool. There's another thing that I wanna point out that I think others should learn from as well. So I love the story that James included on how this came to be, and I think that's something that's really cool that everybody should be pursuing. It's something that he kind of ran across by accident, saw the tango dancers, went and took a few photographs, and ended up giving them another time to one of the women, this woman on the cover who was in here. And that led, one thing led to another, next thing you know, he's joining the Facebook group and he's getting involved. And that's something that I think a lot of photographers don't really pursue. And it's definitely going to be narrowing down a subject. It needs to be something you're interested in, but that's how you continue something and that's how projects develop. And I think this kind of social aspect of this is really important too, because I know a lot of us tend to be a little bit introverted when we're working with a camera. In other words, we're just trying to observe. We don't want to be seen. We don't want to be uh, present in the scene. We want to photograph things naturally. And that is important. But then the relationships between you and your subject, I think are also equally important. And there's a really cool social aspect of this that probably is going to propel this into further projects down the road. And so, James, thank you for sharing this. This is a really cool book. Again, I will link everybody up in the show description. You guys should check them out. And of course, I want to thank everybody who sent something in today. This was a good stack of books here. I really uh, enjoyed doing this. So anyway, if you have any questions, drop a comment below. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.